In the last episode of the Wolfsburg career mode, we finalized the position for our homegrown talent deciding on a center back development plan. We signed Santiago Ascasibar as a future midfielder for our starting 11. Our journey in the DFB Pokal saw us lose to Bayern in the semis, but we still managed a second place finish in the Bundesliga. Hey, what's going on everyone? Flick here. Welcome back to another episode of our FIFA 21 next gen Wolfsburg career mode. This is episode three which means we will be starting season two of the save. There's a few reasons why I'm excited for this second season. First off, as a result of our second place Bundesliga finish, we have qualified for Champions League. This is what our group looks like. We've got the likes of Barcelona, Lyon, and Celtic. But in addition to that, as a result of now being in European competitions, I think that opens up a lot of different possibilities for transfers we can make. Speaking of transfers, Wolfsburg have been busy making moves off of the virtual pitch bringing in Aster Vranks from Mechelen. He'll be joining the club next summer on a four-year deal, and we will be trying to replicate that transfer in this career mode. When asked about his play style, he described himself as someone that can both attack and defend, and he does have a lot of aspirations for his future at Wolfsburg. If you're enjoying this Wolfsburg career mode and want to help support the channel, a like on the video goes a long way, and subscribing is the best way to stay up to date when these new episodes go live. We'll begin by covering our board objectives for this second season. We did manage to complete all of these in season one. We'll see if we can do it again this year. As we begin with the youth development, we need to sign at least three players younger than 20 years old with potential greater than the average overall rating of players currently in that same position. Pretty easy to achieve. We just need to focus on our youth academy. Although within two seasons, we do need to sign one of those Youth Academy players and start to feature them in the senior team. Moving on to brand exposure, we need to maintain seven clean sheets and home matches this season financially, finishing the season with a profit margin of 150 million. The board wants us to reach the round of 16 and finish in a top four spot for the Bundesliga this year. And for continental success, we need to reach the quarterfinal of Champions League. Whether this current Wolfsburg squad has the quality to achieve those objectives is still yet to be seen. I do believe that we exceeded expectations by finishing second in the Bundesliga last year. And now that we've got another competition to factor in like Champions League, we've got our work cut out for us, but I wanna cover a couple of changes I have made to the starting 11. First off, you might notice we've got a new captain for season two. I mentioned this briefly in the last episode, but because Arnold is approaching the most appearances for Wolfsburg, I think it's right that we make him captain for the team. I have also decided to give De Kettler the nod to start at the right mid position. It was a tough choice putting Jao Victor on the bench because he was our top assist player last season, but De Kettler definitely has the higher ceiling in terms of his potential, and it's important that we give him more minutes. Finally, I wasn't sure what we would do with Philip. If we're sticking to realism, we should let him leave the club because his loan would be expiring this season. However, because his parent club is not in FIFA, I think it's all right to keep him here at Wolfsburg. However, I'm not sure he'll stay in our starting 11 because there's a transfer in mind that would improve at that position. The board has given us a hefty boost to our transfer budget, a total of 80 million. I think a big reason for that is because we're in Champions League this year, bringing us to a total of 120 million in our transfer budget. We don't need to spend all those funds in one place. One thing I would like to do is Kind of take my time going through our transfer budget so that we don't progress too quickly in this career mode and keep the results realistic for us. However, I would like to sign a former Wolfsburg player in Julian Draxler. He last featured for Wolfsburg in their 16-17 season before leaving to PSG for a 40 million deal. And now that he's completed that challenge of competing in a different league, I think it's time for him to make his return to the Bundesliga. I think this move lines up really well for both parties. For Draxler, he still has quite a lot of time left in his playing career, only 27 years old, so we probably haven't seen his peak potential. And for us, we're taking on our own new challenges by competing in Champions League for the first time in quite a while. This transfer was completed for 35 million, agreeing to a crucial first team player on a three-year deal worth 68 grand a week. As promised, we will also look to complete the signing of Aster Vrongs. This is a look at how he is in game up to a 69 overall and offering a three star skill move five star weak foot combo i'm not sure if he'll fit into our first team substitutes in this first season realistically if we do bring him in he would probably go out on loan but i don't think you can deny the potential that this player has if the loan spells work well and we see an improvement to his overall there's no reason he can't eventually become part of the squad we ended up meeting his release clause of 4.45 million agreeing to a sporadic squad role on a five-year deal worth 5.9 grand a week. While the focus so far has been on players coming into the club, we have started to receive offers for some of our own players, 
including offers from Premier League teams for Pongrasic. This is not a player I'm looking to part ways with quite yet. However, a lot of Bundesliga center backs do eventually make the move to the Premier League. So maybe if we want to stick with realism, we'll reconsider these sort of offers in the future. But we did end up letting some players go, including William. I'm surprised Milan were willing to give us 21 million for a third string right back, but we will absolutely take that deal. A couple of other permanent transfers being for Mehmedi and Klaus. Stefaniak also left on a permanent deal, and then the rest of these transfers were all loan deals. You might notice that a couple of our Youth Academy players will feature in here. I appreciate the comments suggesting that I let them go out on loan so that they can improve their overall. Although we could definitely promote plenty of the players in our Youth Academy, I decided to just focus on two of them for now. The first one being De Silva, a left mid from Brazil. The other promotion for Gross, a center back slash left back from Germany. We will still try to continue building up our youth academy, starting with a scouting network in Germany for six months, looking for any type of player. I also wanted to set up a scouting network in South Korea, looking for a winger. A lot of Korea's biggest talents have spent at least part of their playing career in Germany, including Hyung Min's son. So hopefully we can find the next big talent out of that country. Finally, we'll be setting up a scouting network in the United States for six months, looking for a physically strong player. We do already have a player type in our squad similar to that with John Anthony Brooks, but with so many Americans making the move to the Bundesliga and this being one of my favorite types of players to scout for, I think this was the right choice. Some final squad changes will be updating De Kettler's kit number to the one he currently wears for Club Bruges, the number 90, and we'll be sticking a center forward development plan for Jao Victor. Now that we're utilizing the 4-1-2-1-2 formation more often, I see him being more of a striker than a winger for us. And that didn't change his overall, but hopefully we can see some improvements to his shooting stats over time. Some big moves for us over the summer, but if all things go well, this Wolfsburg squad will continue to grow both in terms of their overall and also our achievements in game. Speaking of the gameplay, we'll be starting with focus on Bundesliga, then we'll turn our attention to Champions League. We'll kick off our Season 2 Bundesliga campaign against Augsburg, who have been building a pretty unique side behind the scenes. They've signed Jovetic, who is one of my favorite players from older FIFAs. Also, a couple of high potential players mixed into the team, like Gumne at the right back position. But I think it's fair to say that the focus of this match was definitely on Draxler as he makes his return to the Bundesliga. With the addition of Draxler, along with some of the attacking minded center midfielders that we have in this Wolfsburg side, I think we're going to score a fair amount of goals in season two, hopefully, an improvement from our first season. But we'll start off the highlights here with a good save from the Augsburg keeper, maybe. Arnold could have done better with the placement of that shot, but now it's Augsburg with a chance of their own. They will finish that chance, making it 1-0 for them and opening up their Bundesliga season scoring. Now it's going to be an interesting bit of build up play. Initially, we had the cross block, but it's going to be an acrobatic finish from Jovetic, one of the better headers I've seen so far in this save. And that's really saying something considering the number of goals that Veghorst has scored for us. We're still in the first half here as in the 34th minute, it's Brekolo feeding the ball inside to Veghorst who will lay off the pass to Draxler. I think he does need a little bit more time to grow in this Wolfsburg squad and see where he can be best utilized in this team. Another chance missed for Arnold, kind of disappointing to see from him. Two very good goal scoring opportunities that we did not make the most of. But now on the brink of halftime, it's De Kettler from the right wing position and the shot blocked by Veghorst ultimately fell to Brekolo. And while that might not be the best goal that we've scored so far in the save, it was an important one at that, cutting the deficit in half. We'll see if we can carry some of that momentum forward to the second half as now it's Veghorst playing the ball inside to Draxler due to the fact that he's got a five star weak foot. He is so unpredictable and what a way to mark your debut at a new team. A signature Draxler finesse shot finding the upper left hand corner and equalizing there. After scoring, I felt like this match was ours to lose. We had all the momentum and that was shown here right after kickoff. We win back possession. It's Draxler, a couple of skill moves, creating space and waiting for the supporting runs. Eventually, it's Arnold who may have missed on some of his first couple of chances, but he will make up for it with a beautiful chip shot finding the back of the net and giving us the lead in the 55th minute. That chip was so perfectly placed that it almost clipped the underside of the crossbar going in. With this now having the advantage, we can dictate the play and slow things down a little bit as Gilavogi will set up Veghorst, really utilizing his strength there to hold off the defender and in front of goal isn't going to be missing often, giving us a two goal lead now going to the final stages of the match. We still need to defend well 
as Strobel will set up a chance for Kadira playing through Jovetic, denied by Castells. That's what we want to see from our goalkeeper. And now a good bit of experience from Gilavogi to nod that backwards for Castells to keep the match at 2-4. to four. And even here in the final minutes, it's going to be another huge save. I don't know what it was about the start of this match that made us go down so quickly, but really after we got the ball rolling and scored a couple of goals, we were in control, picking up three points on our opening Bundesliga match day. All that being in a difficult Champions League group, we'll start with a favorable match against Celtic, who we probably have the advantage of in terms of overall ratings. With this being a midweek fixture and Bundesliga matches coming up, I decided to rotate the squad slightly, featuring Bender, Kasi Bar and Schlager. And how I usually like to approach these Champions League fixtures is that I'll simulate one of the two matches. I decided to simulate the away leg because Celtic don't have a real stadium in FIFA 21 that did result in a draw. Draxler was a player to watch in this one, showing a lot of confidence on the attack and setting Veghorst up with a good goal scoring opportunity. Unfortunately, that effort going off the post. A second chance though for Weghorst, but this time the effort will be called back for offside. It seems like crossing will be the way to go in this one as Mbabu from the right flank will loft in across to Brekolo, mistiming the jump as that only goes out for a goal kick. But now it's Celtic with a chance of their own and it will be Brown to open up the scoring for them. One of their most experienced players and this is definitely not his first rodeo in the Champions League. While he may be more known as a holding midfielder than a striker, you can't deny his positional awareness. As we try to immediately respond, you may notice that it looks like Celtic have 12 players on the pitch. There was a kit clash for our opponents and the referee. It was kind of annoying trying to differentiate the two, but luckily we do get the equalizer here in the 27th minute. Veghorst finding the back of the net. And now we'll move forward to some second half highlights. Some intelligent passes here from Celtic really working the ball around and finding the perfect goal scoring opportunity. It's Johnston to give them the lead. I think Celtic's experience definitely factored into this match. They're typically a part of either Champions League or Europa League, whereas for us, we haven't been part of European competitions in quite a while. As we get into the final third of this match, you may notice that we typically have two strikers up top. That's because we switched formations to our 4-1-2-1-2 narrow tactics. Jao Victor with a good effort there on his preferred right foot going narrowly wide of the post and I don't think the keeper would have been able to stop that had it been just a few more inches to the right but now it's Vekor setting up Brekolo who featured as a center attacking mid for us somehow the ball fell to him and in front of goal it's going to be saved well by the goalkeeper although could have been a better finish in all honesty from Brekolo just two minutes left in this one we're trying to win back possession we've got team press on we're doing everything in our power but it was Celtic who managed to break the press and they're going to lob our keeper, getting their third goal to match. There's not a whole lot we could have done there. On one side, I think getting a goal and potentially a draw from this match outweighed the risk of conceding a third. It didn't work out this time, but I don't think I would have changed my tactics given another chance. We'll have to learn from this match as we still have two more Champions League fixtures for the gameplay against Lyon and Barcelona. Lyon are one of those sides in Kurumo that are always going to build a solid squad, a lot of high potential players in their team to start off with, and they have managed to make some good signings, bringing in Dennis Mann at the right wing position, who has been suggested a few times in the comments section as a potential pickup for us. Clearly, Lyon were too quick for us to make that transfer but fortunately things went well for the simulation we got a 1-0 win in our home match now being able to feature a fully rested side we've got ground to make up in our champions league group and another win against leon is crucial this is the exact sort of play i was hoping for to start off the match Rusion getting involved from the left back position quite a few crossing options and we'll option for the far post it's the kettler unable to beat the defender to the ball now it's leon off the throw in and in the 20th minute they'll lop to cross in Bruno Guimaraes making the run from the midfield and scoring an absolute wonder goal. We made the decision to turn down CPU shot error and now it seems like the CPU can't miss on these efforts, but this is the sort of challenge I was hoping for in this save. Straight after kickoff, it's going to be Brekolo who manages to cut inside waiting for the run from Draxler. The keeper choosing to close down the angle and Draxler should have done better with that effort. Good to set up the chance with a fake shot, but just needs to work on his finishing. 
Hopefully with a little bit of time, we'll see some improvements in that department. But now again, it's Deketlera on this right-hand side, playing the pass to Draxler, cuts inside well. He's known for his dribbling ability, unable to find the back of the net though. We need Draxler to emerge as a leader in these key fixtures. And I hope this performance is an outlier and not a consistent issue. As a creative player, Draxler has not had any issues setting up plenty of chances for the players around him. It's Deketlera who didn't have the best angle on this sort of shot, pretty easy save for Lopez. In the 55th minute, we're trying to send a cross into Veghorst, going over both him and the defender. Draxler with the cheeky back heel. And in front of goal, I expected this to find the back of the net. Veghorst does not usually miss from this range. When you miss as many chances as I did in this one, you start to wonder if it's just not going to be your day. And I think a lapse of concentration led to this second goal from Leon. I lost track of who I was controlling for a split second. And when you're playing on ultimate difficulty, that's only going to lead to one result, another goal. I wouldn't say we were completely out of this match, though, because even up to this point, we were creating chances. We just weren't converting them into goals. This finesse shot effort from Philip going just inches wide of the far post. Unfortunate not to see that effort go in. And in the 88th minutes of our super sub, Jao Victor, who gets his solo effort denied initially by Lopez, the second effort denied by the Leon defenders. Now it's Victor trying to get this one onto the far post. And I don't know what it was, man. Leon, they let up so many opportunities, but ultimately it was enough for them to still hold on to the clean sheet as this final chance was saved. Clearly we've got some work to do on our composure in these big matches. Even dating back to last year, we lost some of our big fixtures like Bayern in the poke call. So that's something I'm going to try to work on. One step in the right direction would be getting a good result against Barcelona. We've got our work cut out for us on our final Champions League match day. I don't think we're mathematically eliminated from finishing second in our group as Celtic and Leon also have a match to play. But as things stand, we're sitting fourth in our group, which doesn't even guarantee us Europa League football. As far as the previous fixture against Barcelona went, it was a Leo Messi hat trick that led to a 3-0 loss. The question of whether we would rise to the occasion or stumble out of European competitions was on my mind, but we get off to a good start as this 4-1-2-1-2 formation seems to be offering more attacking chances, so I think we will be using that more moving forward. We just need Castells to continue making good stops from the back. On the ensuing kick though, it's Messi that comes short and of course known for his dribbling ability will eventually end up finding Anzu Fati on the pass. Some good link up play between the Barcelona players and an unexpected player to score a goal in the final third. It's Sanchez who must have stayed up on the corner kick, firing that effort home on the near post. We'll try to respond though as a cross floated in. It's Draxler that makes contact, but the effort going just wide. We're playing a dangerous but necessary game, asking our fullbacks to join the attack and offer one more attacking option in the final third. Eventually it is Jao Victor to find the equalizer, getting it on his five-star weak foot and firing that effort home on the near post. Now it's Brecolo playing the ball inside to Jao Victor, waiting for the run from Brecolo. And this time we're going to power another effort through the far post. It looks like we finally have been able to find our finishing boots. And credit to Brecklow, despite having to play more centrally at center attacking mid, it doesn't seem to have affected him. Chance for Barcelona just before the halftime break. Junior Firpo finding Awar and now Messi firing an effort on the far post. Saved well from Castells and starting the counterattack as he does find Roussillon on the outlet. For some reason, the Barcelona players were not closing him down. And as a result, he's able to move the ball forward. It's Jao Victor who tries crossing this one in, but Ter Stegen, quick to come off his line, will punch that one away. And we're into the second half. Another one-on-one -on -one chance for Draxler. I think that's the area he definitely needs to improve the most. His finishing in those sort of situations has not been great. As this effort from Jao Victor, again, right at Ter Stegen. And even Veghorst here, pushing out wide and giving another option to Arnold. And now Brecolo unable to find the back of the net and keeping Barcelona within reaching distance. You just can't do that with the players that Barcelona have. They will find a way to get the equalizer and it's going to be Messi who somehow gets by John Anthony Brooks. He'll cut inside, getting this one over to Mason Mount and we do concede the equalizer here in the 84th minute. What that will mean for us as far as our Champions League group is concerned is still yet to be seen, but I certainly want to push forward and try to find the winner in the final minutes. We will even make some final substitutions, De Kettler being one of them. I felt like he's one of those players that often finds himself in goal scoring positions, albeit not being able to finish a whole lot of them. But this final corner kick is again saved well by Ter Stegen. He was 
one of those players that was able to make so many saves coming off of his line and leading Barcelona to a draw in a match that we probably should have won. Fortunately for us, though, a draw was enough for us to finish third in our group. Even had we gotten a win, Lyon still would have finished second. So ultimately, things worked out for us and we will be competing in Europa League in the second half of this season. Our final match before the winter break will see us play Mines, who narrowly avoided the drop from the Bundesliga last season as they won the relegation playoff. Hopefully they'll have made some improvements to their squad and will make for an interesting final match of this episode. I'm pretty familiar with Mines because we did do a live stream series with them here on YouTube and Mateta is one of those players that can definitely contribute some goals, whether it be scoring them or assisting them like they did here. Castells did well to close down the angle, but it was an even better finish from the Mines attacker. More times than not though, we do manage to find a way to respond to conceding goals and it's Jao Victor who will score one of the better goals in terms of technical ability that we've had so far in the save. What a player he has been having to unexpectedly start at the right mid position in season one and now even featuring more often as a striker in this 4-1-2-1-2 formation. It's Victor again through on goal. This time the effort will be saved by the Mines goalkeeper and in the 25th minute it's going to be some ridiculous build up here I'm not sure what that animation was from Castells it fell favorably to the Mines attacker as they will get the lead back it was almost as if our defense had already given up on the play and I don't blame them because that should have been a routine save Mines were pushing forward a lot of players as Arnold will win back possession in the midfield and he'll play through Jal Victor already having had a one-on-one -on -one chance with the keeper this time he'll go on the near post managing to find the equalizer in the 40th minute and that changed the momentum for the rest of this one because now we could open up the attack mines continue to push players forward and we'll just keep on counterattacking if that's how they want to play some good quick passes between some of our players as Gerhardt that effort going just wide Latza is going to play this into Stefanovic who did score the first goal for mines and he nearly set up another one there uh, from their club captain but the pace of Jao Victor is just too much to handle, man. He is going to finish this chance extremely well to the far post. I was doing some research on Victor, and there aren't a whole lot of players that offer a five-star weak foot and four-star skills. So we might have been very lucky to have started this crew mode with such a versatile player. We'll try to see off this mines attack as Mowepu, another player from RB Salzburg that I consider transferring in for this crew mode, will head the effort over the crossbar. And now it's going to be Draxler, another one-on-one -on -one opportunity missed as we get into the final minutes of the match. We're into the two minutes of added extra time, and we will get one more goal, courtesy of Veghorst. He hasn't scored as many goals in this episode as some of the previous ones, but he still has a knack for scoring goals on big occasions, especially with these celebrations that happen with a late goal. But we'll pick up another three points here in the Bundesliga. Let's see where that leaves us in regards to the league table. It's been an interesting Bundesliga season so far. We'll see the emergence of Dortmund, who finished seventh in the league last year, currently undefeated with 14 wins and three draws. But everyone outside of them are very tightly congested in the top eight, only four points separating second place Frankfurt and eighth place Leipzig. I would like to continue establishing ourselves as a top four Bundesliga side, but I'm not counting the title race out quite yet. You never know how results will go for us and how they're going to go for Dortmund. Unfortunately though, we did suffer a loss in the second round in the Deutsche Pokal to Werder Bremen. That match actually went to extra time and once that kicked off, the goals started arriving in abundance. We'll spend a little bit of time reviewing the calendar and talking in detail how the results went for us. Kicking off our Bundesliga campaign, that was a gameplay match against Augsburg and then a good result with a draw against Bayern, continuing our winning form with a win over uh, Dusseldorf and then moving into September no surprise to see us lose against Bundesliga leaders Dortmund and then for the most part wins outside of that match against Barcelona always going to be the most difficult opposition in our Champions League group and then the next month October not the best form both in terms of league and Champions League performance as well as the Deutsche Pokal a lot of L's there uh, we start to pick up a couple of results with Köln and Stuttgart and then finally, we've got November and December. Not the best form in November. Back to some winning ways toward the end of December. Reclo seems to be playing more of a role in this Wolfsburg team for season two, already seeing a plus two in his overall and also joint top with both Veghorst and Victor for top scores. Moving to the assist category, no surprise to see our captain 
Arnold along with Veghorst leading the way and Babu in third with three assists. I didn't realize we had this many players out on loan, but we'll briefly cover each of them a little bit so you can get an idea of how things are going. De Silva already seeing a plus five in his overall, really good to see there. And then kind of the same thing with Gross, only going up plus four, but if he maintains that sort of results, we should see a mid 70s for his overall rating. Bronx doing pretty well, a plus two on his loan at Feyenoord. Hopefully we'll see him somewhere in the mid 70s come the end of the season. But yeah, really no complaints as far as the loan system goes. A awesome feature to use in FIFA 21. I want to give a big shout out to channel members. If you're interested in learning more about that, there's a link available in the description talking all about it. You get access to emotes to use in both the comment section as well as chat for live streams. And it is also another way to help support the channel. But transitioning to the squad, I kind of wanted to consider signing an attacker in this upcoming transfer window so that we can really utilize that 4-1-2-1-2 formation moving forward. If you have any striker or center forward suggestions, feel free to leave that in the comments section. But if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you all again soon.